And so I usually list, watch here and look at the questions. Down and down. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you and ask questions. Sure, yeah, interrupt, as any, we go. interrupt any time. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dave Shady here, Director of the Division of Ag. So we're welcome to our Tuesdays at 1 o'clock where we do uh, Facebook Live. And to, with me today, I have Dan Coleman. Dan is uh, an eradicator extraordinaire. He's our guy that's working to make sure we get rid of some of those really nasty invasive plants that are impacting our environment out there. So welcome, Dan. Thanks. Thanks for coming in today. So why do we in the Division of Ag deal with invasive plants? Well, um, like it or not, you're, you'll find that any kind of an invasive if it's going to get into our natural environment, it's going to in, impact the environment and it's going to impact agriculture. So some of the things that we're working on right now, just so we know. Um, so unfortunately, in Alaska and in the U.S., we've now got confirmed Ralstonia solanocerium, and I can never say these names, race 3 bivar 2. So what is that? Uh, Ralstonia is a virus uh, that's in flowers or gets into flowers with the trouble and this is why we pay attention it also can get into our potatoes our tomatoes our peppers and bread and eggplants so if this particular virus would get established in the state of Alaska it would be detrimental devastating to our plants so fortunately the trace forward we have only found one possible contact in uh, it's been quarantined in Craig Alaska and we'll take care of that and uh, help them uh, take care of those geraniums and move forward. So the good news is out of the 270,000, 80,000 plants shipped around the country, we've only got about 10 in Alaska. So we're making sure that those 10, they're not the direct variety, but we're making sure that the variety that did show up didn't get cross-contaminated. So that's why we do these things. A couple other things we're going to work on over the next year is we've got a request from the forest uh, community to, to quarantine or to outlaw European bird cherry and may, or what they call the Mayday tree, which is something that we'll be working on this summer. Uh, that's been requested. And in Juneau, we've got a little bug that has been transported into Alaska from, believe it or not, Oregon. And it's called uh, Balsam Woolly Adel Adelgid. And what we'll be doing is we're going to be working with the community, forestry, U.S. Forest Service, and others in Juneau to get that pest eradicated so it doesn't get into our natural forests. So with that little bit of an introduction, uh, the big, big project we have going this summer is with Elodia. And Dan is our lead on that project. So, you know, since we're going to be dealing, spending uh, over the next few years, two to three million dollars on this, we wanted to talk a little bit to the public about why are we uh, going so aggressively against this plant, why Dan needs your help in the public to identify and make sure we get this eradicated. So Dan, I know we're going to be short on time with a half hour, so if you could kind of give us a rundown, that'd be awesome. Sure. Hey, uh, <clears throat> I'm Dan Coleman. I'm the coordinator for the Invasive Plant and Agricultural Pest Program with the Division of Ag. Um, and with the weather turning to spring out there, we're all getting that urge to begin our summer activities, and I I think it's probably already started with for a lot of folks moving boats around and trying to get on the water. So today I'll be talking about a major issue as Dave said. It's called Elodia. It's Alaska's first and only aquatic invasive plant so far. Um, and as Dave said, the, the Division of Ag manages invasive plants through Alaska Statute 0305-027 gives DNR that authority. Um, the Invasive Plant and Agricultural Pest Program is housed at here at, with Division of Ag. And in 2010, there was an MOU signed between DNR, Division of Fish and Game, and Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, and DNR was given the, the authority, the thumbs up, to manage and eradicate Elodia in Alaska with support from those other agencies. So why is Elodia such a big deal? Uh, first off, it's a non-native plant, it spreads quickly and easily, and it's extremely invasive. It reproduces vegetatively, which means it clones itself, and any small fragment of Elodia dropped into a water body will start a new plant or a new infestation. 
So it's, it's able to move around um, very quickly and easily on our aquatic conveyances, our boats, float planes, fishing gear, anything that goes in the water has the possibility to pick Elodia up. And if you put that conveyance in another water body, um, you could easily start another infestation. So Elodia in our water bodies, it, it can inhibit navigation. It can grow so thick in certain cases, um, mostly in shallow water, that it can, it can cause trouble for boats or float planes to move through there. Um, it can alter the natural habitat when it grows really thick like that. It has, in, especially like in flowing water, it has the ability to stop sediments and those sediments then land on the bottom. I've seen it in Anchorage in Little Survival Creek. It was growing very thick where there once was a gravel bottom. And once the elodia was established, it stopped all the um, fine sediments and they settled down and it turned into kind of a mushy, muddy bottom. So it, it can really alter natural habitats. Um, how did elodia get to Alaska? That's a question I asked all the time and it's a good question. Um, we believe it came up in the aquarium trade. It's a very popular aquarium plant because it reproduces and grows so easily. Um, it's common in classroom projects. You know, you, you give every kid a little clipping of this stuff, they put it in their own little bag or tank, and now they've got their own plant growing. So with this plant growing in aquariums, um, it's, it's, it's possible, it's likely that people poured their aquariums out when they were done with their plant or their fish into natural water bodies, and that's how it got started here in Alaska. So. Do not dump your aquariums into our water bodies, no matter what's in them. Um, so how does Elodia spread? I, I mentioned that any little chunk or any little fragment of this plant can turn into a whole new plant or infestation. Um, so these plant materials, they get caught on our equipment. And then that equipment, we move from one water, water body to another and that little chunk falls off, that little fragment begins a new infestation. So what does Elodia look like? And John's gonna queue up here some slides. This is a picture of Elodia. The, the real thick fragment is kinda newer growth. The fragment on the left, the leaves are kinda spread out a little bit, but you can see it, um, a good way to identify it, 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 it grows, the leaves are arranged in whorls, and whorls of three, typically. Next slide, John. You can kind of see um, the leaves are spread out, the whorls are spread out, and they have three leaves per whorl. You can go to the next one. Near the tips of the plant, um, the whorls are kind of close together or smushed. You can go to the next one. There you can really see, well, um, whorls of three leaves. You can go to the next. And here's a cross section. So you can see the three leaves in a, in a single whorl. You can go to the next. Here's a couple more. Really gives you a good idea of how to identify this plant. There isn't another plant in the state that grows in this fashion with whorled leaves arranged in groups of three. So the next slide. And this is what Elodia looks like growing in water pretty close up. The next slide will show us backed off from that just a little ways. You can go to the next one. So that's what it looks like. If you've got a dock with some shallow water and you see some plants grown in this fashion with three leaves, uh, you may have Elodia. So go to the next slide, please. Here again, we're just backing off a little further. You can see the Elodia in the water and it's, it's totally taken over this, this channel here. This is from Sand Lake. Next slide. And there's just a pile of Elodia that was pulled out of um, that channel on Sand Lake and set on the dock. So what can you all do to help um, is another question I get all the time. So the first thing you can do is avoid putting your boat or landing your plane on water bodies infested with Elodia or avoid areas infested with Elodia. Um, boats, kayaks, rafts, all watercraft, before moving them, 
from one water body to another, whether it has Elodia in it or not, um, we ask that you clean, drain, and dry your boat before you leave. Most people that take care of their boats or have nice boats do this anyway. Right. It's pretty common, but it's good to do it at the site you're at and not when you get home or not at another boat launch. Clean, drain, and dry your boat before you move to another one. Um, yeah, and that goes not just for your boats and your, your planes, but also your fishing gear, your ice augers, your anchors, your anchor lines, anything you drop in the water and pull out again that has some plant, that has the capability to gather or host plant material, we ask that you clean, drain, and dry those things before moving on to another water body. Float planes, um, again, avoid infested water bodies. T taxi and take off with your rudders up. I know a lot of uh, float plane operators that go in, in and out of Alexander Lake have started doing that, taking off and taxiing with their rudders up. Um, clear your rudders once you take off. You can do that by shaking them off real good, lifting them, dropping them. It's pretty common practice for the operators that go in and out of um, Alexander Lake, also Lake Hood, which once had Elodia. The other thing you guys can do is report any suspected infestations. Um, take good pictures of the plant. Uh, try to get pictures of the leaves, how it's growing in the water. Take some GPS coordinates note or note the location on a map. You can also call me or email me. Um, my information is on our, on our website. Or you can use the Alaska Department of Fish and Games Invasive Species Reporter. And that phone number there is 1-877-INVASIVE, I-N-V-A-S-I-V. So how are we doing on time here, guys? I tried to... You've got about 15 minutes for the rest of the program, so we're doing oh. really good. Good. Doing really good. Keep it up. Good. So now we can kind of talk about where exactly Elodia is located. That'd be awesome. And John can move on to the next slide here. So in interior Alaska, Elodia is located in Chena Slough, in the Chena River, Chena Lake, Birch Lake, Bathing Beauty Pond, Tochakit Slough, which is downstream of Ninana, and Manly Slough, right in Manly Hot Springs there. Um, moving on to South Central, or the next slide. We've got Anchorage, and in Anchorage, Elodia is located in Little Campbell Lake, Sand Lake, DeLong Lake, and Lake Hood. Those water bodies have all been treated and um, are Elodia free currently, but we are also monitoring those very closely. Jewel Lake has Elodia. Um, that was treated last fall and we plan to do so again here this spring. And also Little Survival Creek on the south side of town that flows into Potter Marsh. And uh, it has Elodia. I've been treating that one as well for a few years and it's looking really good, really clean, but we're continuing to monitor that and all these infestations. Uh, next slide, please. Outside of Anchorage in South Central Alaska, Elodia is located in Alexander Lake, Sucker Lake, and in last fall we found it growing in Big Lake in a few spots. And uh, we've, we've treated all of these lakes, but these treatments are ongoing and it's multi-year projects. Big Lake, we're gonna be spending a lot of time mapping it out figuring out exactly where the elodia is growing and, and spot treating it as we find it. Uh, next slide, please. On the Kenai Peninsula, Stormy Lake, Sport Lake, Daniels Lake, Beck Lake, two lakes connected to Beck Lake um, have all been treated and are clear of elodia. Again, we're, we're continuing to monitor that um, with partners down on the Kenai Peninsula. And also last fall, it was found in Sandpiper Lake on the north side of the Kenai Peninsula in the Kenai National Wildlife Refuge. And that will be treated early this spring once the ice is off the lake. Next slide. Down in Cordova, um, this is actually the first place that Elodia was noted to be growing back in the 80s in Eak Lake. Um, since then, it's been found in Alaganax Slough, McKinley Lake, Martin Lake, Eak Lake River, Eak River, um, Bering Lake, Wooded Pond, and Wrongway Pond. And the U.S. Forest Service is working on treating some of these water bodies. I know Wrongway Pond was treated 
very successfully last summer and they're going to continue on with their eradication program down there. So with that, that kind of concludes what I have to, to talk about. If there's anything you'd like me to elaborate on or if we've gotten any questions, Dave, I'm happy to continue. Yeah, well, so, so let's, you know, uh, right now I don't have any direct questions. Um, I think it's kind of important to talk about um, our approach to Alexander and Sucker Lake. We, we kind of, uh, uh, Dave Rutz and I from Fish and Game have uh, determined that to be a critical area. We, the Fish and Game has uh, been putting some restrictions on fishing so that we minimize the traffic. We went in last year, you put in Diquat, if I remember correctly, we spent uh, for almost $400,000 on chemicals just to get the, the worst of the center out. So why don't you tell people a little bit about the plan of the summer? You've been taking uh, product out by snow machine this winter. You're going to helicopter some in. So just give them a rundown of what, what the summer looks sure. like for you. Sure, yeah. So Alexander Lake and Sucker Lake are, there's they're separate water bodies, but there's a creek that flows out of Alexander Lake, Alexander Creek, and Lower Sucker Creek flows out of the Sucker Lake systems into um, Alexander Creek. So they're really connected. And these, these lakes are, I'll call it prime habitat for Elodia. It's, it's their shallow water lakes, soft bottoms, and there's a real slow flow of water through these, water, through these lakes. And um, Elodia has really taken off there. And it, these lakes are fully infested um, before treatment, they were fully infested and really not not doing so well. So last summer, as Dave said, we we treated these lakes with a contact herbicide called Diquat. Um, and what Diquat does is it kills anything it touches. So all the elodia that this this product touched or or brushed across, that plant material died. Um, the roots stayed alive because the product doesn't touch them, but we really cleared it out. We took out the mass, the bulk of the, the um, biomass growing in these water bodies. And this season, as Dave said, we, we've, we've started hauling another uh, product out there. It's called Fluoridone. And Fluoridone is a systemic herbicide. The plant uptakes it um, and it kills the roots, it kills the plant. This one is, is a pretty expensive and highly scientific herbicide. It only, at certain concentrations, it only attacks the elodia. The native vegetation isn't affected. So we've been hauling that stuff out there on snow machine. We're, we're gonna bring more out with um, helicopters and we're gonna be laying this stuff down in Alexander Lake and Sucker Lakes this season. It's the first year of a full, full lake treatments out there. Um, we'll probably be doing full lake treatments for another three years following this season, two or three years until we've completely eradicated Elodia from the lakes. And then we'll be continuing to monitor and look for it around the edges. These lakes are real dynamic. They've got creeks flowing in, um, creeks flowing out. So it's, it's a really big project to, to ensure that once the lakes are free, that we then we go into these creeks, clean these up and fully eradicate it. It's a really big project and um, pretty expensive. We're, we're putting a lot of money and a lot of manpower into just these water bodies here in the Matsu. Okay, so could you uh, kind of enlighten people on the safety? I mean, I, kn I know whenever we say we're going to use a herbicide, people get a little concerned about the safety, and th these are two of the safest chemicals that can be used in, because of the simple cell nature of the plants. So if you can talk about that and then maybe add in the, the kind of the dynamics on the pike and the salmon and how getting rid of the elodia is going to help us with, with ensuring our salmon fisheries, which is one of the keys we're working on. Sure. So we mentioned one herbicide called Diquat. Um, that's the contact herbicide. This one is non-discriminative. So any, any plants that it touches, it'll kill. We, use, we like to use this one early in the season before the native stuff wakes up. Um, that's one advantage I, I forgot to mention that Elodia has to the native plants is um, during the winter our native plants kind of go to sleep. They die back for the for the winter season where Elodia continues to grow all winter long. You can drill th through five feet of ice on Alexander Lake and you'll find green growing Elodia. It's pretty amazing. 
So we like to use the die quad early in the year, knock the elodia down, and then we put down the fluoridone, which is the systemic herbicide. Um, die quad breaks down very quickly. It's out of the water, out of the system within two days. It binds up with natural sediments and UV light breaks it down. So that one's real safe. You put it in the water and it's gone within two days. Um, fluoridone, we want to keep persistent in the water for up to 90 days. Fluoridone only affects um, Elodia, like I said, at a very low concentration between three and 10 parts per billion is what we shoot for. The native vegetation is not affected. Um, fluoridone, the label allows you to swim and drink the water the day that it's applied. So it, it really doesn't have an effect on humans. It only affects plants and their chlorophyll and at low concentrations, which we shoot for, it, it only affects elodia. So it's pretty safe stuff. You can apply it to a water body and drink from that water source the same day. So, so folks, when we have it on a, on a recreational lake and we do some treatments, we put up signs and warn people that we're doing it so they know, but there's really no danger to public health. Correct. So, yeah. so, and the other thing is, you know, I really want to give a shout out to both Fish and Game and to DEC, our partners in this endeavor. Uh, Fish and Game has come to us and asked and works with us day in and day out on our eradication of aquatics. Uh, DEC last year did a fantastic job, got us a general permit uh, put in place so that we have two weeks notice uh, we can be out on these infestations and not let them explode and, and grow. So maybe you can touch on sure. how fast this stuff can move through a system so people kind of know why we want to catch it early. Yeah, yeah. So as Dave said, that DEC got us on the general permit. We can treat within a couple weeks of finding um, a new infestation. So the point, uh, I'll use the case for Alexander Lake. When it was initially discovered there, I believe it was 2013, um, in the fall, the infested acreage was about 50 acres. When the Division of Ag went back the next spring, it had spread to 500 acres just over the winter. Um, now, like I said, Alexander Lake is prime habitat for this plant. It's a shallow water body with some flow, so the elote is able to move through the system very easily just using that natural flow. Um, yeah, that's 10 times the area just in a few months. So being able to respond rapidly when we find a new infestation is key because to treat a 50 acre infestation at Alexander Lake was probably around $50,000 a year for three years. So $150,000 to where we're at now, it's a multi-million dollar project annually um, to treat that full 700 lake, 700 acre lake infestation so yeah being able to respond rapidly is is key uh, big shout out to DEC to getting us that permit big shout out to the Department of Fish and Game um, for for their help as well I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff I do without without those guys so um, yeah collaborating yeah why don't you add some of the other agencies I know you have a Absolutely. Swath of yeah. agencies. So the Fish and Wildlife Service is a big help with funding. Um, other key partners are the Soil and Water Conservation Districts in Fairbanks, down in Homer in the Kenai, uh, Tyonic Tribal Conservation District. Big shout out to those guys. They're a big help, especially in the uh, Alexander drainage. Um, Fairbanks Soil and Water is handling all the treatments up there. Uh, U.S. Forest Service down in Cordova. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service and the CWMA um, down on the Kenai is treating all those infestations. So, yeah, we've got lots of great partners, and I apologize if I forgot anybody. Didn't mean to, but those are the key. Um, you, oh, the Matsu Salmon Habitat Partnership, big time help funding us. The Matsu Borough has helped fund us. Um, State of Alaska DNR really kicking in and helping us out this this year as well. So, yep, couldn't do this without our partners and, and our friends and uh, the Alaska Invasive Species, Species Partnership, all those folks, thanks. 
Right, and, and we even, what's really cool now is we've got border protection doing some work with us and making sure that they see things, you know, we catch things coming in. Yeah. And that yeah. has been a huge, huge, great collaboration so we can avoid it coming across the borders, uh, especially through Canada where they have that jurisdiction. It's been a real success in making sure things like quagga mussels haven't yeah. been imported into the state. So Quagga and we're, zebra we're, mussels. We, there are so many things we're concerned about uh, this is just a good example of when we don't get on it early and often, uh, that's what's happened. So why don't you talk a little bit uh, about how we got on Big Lake and, and how we have uh, two, two different scenarios going on and, and you've already been out there and we, we've been hitting it in the wintertime and you know maybe talk a little bit about developing our uh, protocols that we're trying to do for cold water uh, effective treatments because there's really not a cold water um, type system designed and developed yet. So you're sure. working on that. Yeah, so in November, we were able to treat the Elodia where it was found. Um, big shout out to a member of the public who has a cabin reported an odd growing plant um, in front of their cabin in the northwest corner of Big Lake near the channel to Mud Lake. Um, we were able to treat that rather quickly and put down some Floridone pellets and so we're not, the, the herbicide we use, the Floridone, um, it comes in a form of, it's, it's housed in like a clay pellet. And so it slowly, slowly releases the herbicide over time. We were able to lay that right down, pinpoint onto the infestations, um, the areas where Elodie is growing in Big Lake. And um, I'm really excited to get out there this spring and, and to see firsthand the effects um, on a large scale, this winter we were out there and able to um, test the water and the, uh, the concentrations were good in the areas of infestation. And um, the Elodia was feeling the effects of the herbicide. And so what happens to the plant when it's um, affected by fluoridone is the pigment in the plant in the, photo, in the chlorophyll turns from green to pink or clear. It, and so the plant is no longer able to photosynthesize and it dies. So in Big Lake, um, we're gonna be looking hard and surveying that one pretty hard this spring to, to find it. Well, great, um, we're about out of time. Do you uh, wanna give your contact information and, and again, tell people what you're looking for for this summer? Uh, I know that the, uh, the aircraft associations here and everybody's been working so any other information you want to give out real quick like? Yeah, so the, the easiest way to find me is to do a Google search for DNR invasive plants. You'll pull up our webpage. Um, my phone number is 745-8721. My email address is daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L dot Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N at alaska.gov. You may see me this summer out on a bunch of lakes on the road system. Um, throwing a funny looking rake attached to a rope. That's me looking for Elodia in a lot of our high use lakes, a lot of our lakes that have float plane bases. Um, I searched a bunch of lakes last year and I plan to do so again this year. So look for me and say hi if you see me on the water. Um, we'll have signs up at all our infested lakes. We'll put signs up at uh, water bodies at risk. And yeah, look for that stuff. Give me a call, give me an email if you think you might have a Lodia and I'd be happy to look at your pictures or come take a look at your lake and let you know what I find. Excellent, really appreciate the, the, the work you're doing, Dan, and you and the team. We, you know, we have folks that go out and we do a lot of work trying to identify. Dan and his team, they work to get rid of the things that we've identified we don't wanna have here. So, you know, I really wanna thank you for all your extra efforts. You guys have been out there in, in the not so fun winter months getting that stuff drug, drug out there so we could save costs. I mean, we, we try to be as cost effective with what we're doing with, with the, the, the funding sources we have. So I think we've been real efficient. So next week, folks, we're going to talk about what might you want to grow in your garden? Because, uh, you know, I think anybody who's been watching the news would know that we're going to have some disruptions to the food supply chain. And uh, what we want to do is we want to get Alaska ready to handle that. So. Uh, it'll, our agronomists are going to come at it from how do you grow, what do we grow, so that you can preserve and what will last through the winter and what can you put up 
so it can last even longer. So with that, thanks you very much for tuning in to the Division of Agriculture. Thank Have you. a great day.